Hello and welcome to a Let's Configure OpenLM workshop. So welcome, I am Sagi. I will be guiding you through installation and configuration of the OpenLM system. Now we'll be going over each checkbox, we'll be going over just about everything. Uh, so be, be prepared with your OpenLM system. If you have it installed, then have it open, so you might uh, learn something. If you don't have OpenLM, uh, this will be a great uh, time to install it. So we will start with the OpenLM broker. We'll install and configure a license manager. We'll go to the OpenLM server. Install and configure everything. We'll go over the advanced configurations uh, and just about everything that the configurations hold. We'll install the OpenLM agent. If we have time, we'll install the app manager and also see if it works. But we will go over the what's new in version 4.3. Now, there's not a, not a lot to show visually in version 4.3, but there are a lot of major changes that you should know about. So today you'll see uh, the full span of OpenLM, starting with installation to configuration. Uh, you'll see how we monitor the license manage, uh, managers. We'll install the agent, which help manage it. And we'll see how we can get reports into the OpenLM interface. Now, let's first take a look at the basic configuration, the standard configuration of OpenLM. Just to get us started, I'm going to go over it real quick. So we got the license server. Every one of you guys got a few license servers that you want to monitor. You probably got MATLAB, AutoCAD, CATIA, any of the licensing vendors. So on the license server, we'll install the OpenLM broker which will transmit information to the OpenLM core or OpenLM server, which sits on a network server. And finally, we will be able to see, it's pretty much on any device, but we will see on uh, Chrome, we will be able to see the interface of the OpenLM core. Probably all of you guys already know this, but just to go over it. Now, um, just before we begin, I want to go over a few things that uh, which are new in OpenLM version 4.3. Uh, so first of all, the uh, GDPR compliance has been beefed up. We are compliant with GDPR. You can ask us to uh, delete your information. We won't save the data. Uh, we can encrypt your database, and you can also anonymize your whole database if you want. Now you will have, as a customer, you will have an OpenLM ID. Now the OpenLM ID will show up in the OpenLM server configuration tool. So it will look kind of like this. We'll have the configuration uh, screen, and on the left here, you'll have the OpenLM ID, your OpenLM ID by your li license. The OpenLM ID helps us to identify you <clears throat> as a user before you just told us your name, uh, your company, we probably recognized you, but now you can use your OpenLM ID. It, it will be much easier for us and for you as well. The OpenLM agent was was beefed up. The uh, CPU and memory load of the agent was greatly reduced. Also, the database load that the agent causes was significant, significantly reduced. So now you can have more OpenLM agents connected to the OpenLM server. We also support two new license managers. We got the NVIDIA license manager, which is a, a new player in the game. 
it's now been supported by OpenLM in version 4.3. And also we got uh, Altium, Designer Private License Server, which is also now supported by OpenLM in version 4.3. Now, uh, regarding the upgrade, you will need a new license file. You need to uh, check in with sales at openalarm.com. They will issue you a new license file. You can download and install. So now let's go to a live demonstration of pretty much installing OpenLM on our system. So I have this machine, which will be our installation machine. Here we'll install the OpenLM server. This is the network server that we were talking about. So if you have OpenLM already, nothing for you to do, but if you don't have, please open up the installation file. Now first we'll install the OpenLM server. So just go to the installation file, double click, now it's a pretty simple next, next, next installation, which at the end of it, you will be asked to either provide information, so a new license file could be issued, or you can simply select a license file that was issued to you. Now this step, if you are not selecting a license file and you're registering, uh, this step will need internet connection. So make sure that you, when you install, you have internet connection. If not, you can act, uh, you can contact the support team, the OpenLM support team, and then they can issue you a license that you can simply choose, as I do here. Choose file. I'll choose my license, click next, apply. Successful. So let's click configure now. So we have the OpenLM server configuration tool popping up here. Now I don't want to configure the license manager just yet. We'll do that in two ways as soon as we have the broker set up. So this interface, you could add and create new license, configure new license servers. But before we do that, I want to go over the other configurations of this tool that you probably didn't know about. First of all, you can set a super user. If you click require login credentials, then you can set admin password name and you'll need to, to input the password. Then after that, you can set your different roles if you have roles and permissions extension. Now, another important thing that you need to know is the support space in usernames. The space in a username, sometimes uh, users might have spaces in there, so you might need to have that checked. Uh, need to see how your um, naming schema is. You can also update product feature tables. That means that once a feature is uh, created and published by, let's say, AutoCAD, it has a new name, it has a new uh, product name. So you can update it, click here to update. Uh, for example, 2008, you have 2007, but 2008 is no, not updated into OpenLM. So you can click this or that to get all the packages and, and the features that we know of. Now, the, ne the rest um, is the port that you want to use, the LDAP, which is ex an extension to connect to your Active Directory. I'm not going to go over that now. We got the notifications. So you can send an email notification when a new version of OpenLM uh, server is out. So you can get notified about it in notifications here. Probably didn't know about that. Now, lastly, we got the LM tools. 
if you're not using if we're not using a broker then we will have to connect to the license manager somehow so we want to connect remotely we will have to set the lmutil or uh, executable file that we need in order to connect to that port so we'll need to get that from the license server here but it's only in cases where we have a restricted access and we can't access the license manager but here we will so let's configure a server we have access to the license to our license manager right here let's log into it now we have a FlexLM license manager right here we have the we see the inquiry of it it's giving out licensing data the con we have the configuration services here which show us the lmgrd the license file the debug log of it now we want to track we want to monitor this so let's go to our installation of the openlm broker simply double click install next 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 Now, there are two ways to configure a new license manager using a broker. First of all, you see that we, we finished the installation, so let's open up the broker configuration tool. Now, it searched automatically for my license server. So if I click detect, it will do that again. Now, if I had more, uh, more license managers here, more ports, more vendors, he would have found that. Sometimes you install it on a license server and it finds a few servers that you didn't know that exist. So it configured everything automatically, which is great. Uh, we can test it out if we go to the port data inquiry and execute we see that it's getting the same license output as the license server as the license manager so we see that it got the port it got the license file it got everything but let's say that it doesn't find it sometimes it misses it and it doesn't find or you want to create it uh, manually so we'll delete it for now and this is what we get if it doesn't find anything so first of all let's click on openlm server and click add openlm server This added an OpenLM server that we want to connect to. Now, this is our um, OpenLM server machine. We can test connectivity, and it's successful. Now, the buffer that you see here, if OpenLM server goes down, or the server goes down, so the buffer starts filling up with all the information from the license managers if connection is established again so the broker sends all the data to the openlm server and this way you don't have gaps in your data so you can of course set the buffer file you can clear it if you want or just not activate it so let's click apply and if we have multiple OpenLM servers, we can click here and add another OpenLM server. Let's say that we have a test environment and a production environment. This is how we create a new one. So let's delete it for now. Now going to the license servers that we have, we found this license manager. This is the host name of this machine. Now let's add a port. And it tells us that the port needs to be verified and updated. Great, because it's new. So first we select the type of it. 
so it's FlexLM. This is the port number. We do have a license file, so we can click Set Path Manually and add it. Now it's supposed to be right here. Take the license file, connect it, and watch license file. Watch license file, that means that every 300 seconds it will watch for changes in the license file. Allow to sort license file. That means that it will sort your license file. It will edit the file and change it and sort it uh, to be in an order that's uh, more understandable. Sometimes the vendor give out a messy license file. So it sorts them uh, features below the packages uh, and it sets the hierarchy. So great. This is our path. Let's click apply. Do you want to update the commands to the, with the new data? Yes. That sends uh, the commands, that changes the commands that you see here. The commands is this. So let's go to the commands here. What is this? This is the path of the LMUtil. You see, let's go to data inquiry, for example. You see that it runs this script on this file, on the LMUtil but it runs it on the OpenLM source, on the OpenLM uh, original files, the default files. Now, we don't want that because we have a license manager here. So if we want to change it, we go to commands and then we search for the correct folder. So it's located in Autodesk, LMUtil, open and update. Now this will update all the other commands Now, if we go to status, click execute, it simply shows us what's going on. What's the status if it's up? We can restore the defaults, of course, to restore it to this state if you change the query. So let's apply and go to data inquiry. In data inquiry, if we execute, we see the license output, all the data. Here also, we can restore defaults. Now the reread, Rereads the license file. Remove license is the remove license you have in your easy admin. So if we go to the easy admin for a moment, we click start widgets license servers. And we open up one of the license managers. We see the start, stop, reread. These are this, these options. Now, we, sh we can have another option for remove license, this one, in the activity itself where we see the users. If we click on the users or go to currently consumed licenses by clicking start, widgets, uh, operational, sorry, currently consumed licenses, then we'll be able to see all the users and their sessions. Now, on the left, you have remove license. If you have a FlexLM or DSLS, then you'd be able, if you have the broker configured there, you'll be able to release the license, to remove the license. Just click and release license without any extensions, without anything. Now the start stop does net start, net stop to the license manager itself. So this is the license manager name, the service name. Now we have another tab, we're finished with commands. We have another tab, Vendors. In Vendors, we can fill out the vendor name. It's ADSK Flex, it's uh, FlexLM. Let's call it the uh, FlexLM Options file, because in this screen, we define the Options file. Let's select the Options file itself right here. Just click Select, and let's find it under Autodesk. So we got the options file right here. Again, watch options file. That means that every 600 seconds, the options file <coughs> is being checked for changes. Sorry about that. Options file backup 
uh, path, if you have a backup to the options file or you want to create one, you can just set it here. So let's click apply. And now go to the log files. We have the vendor, we have the options file. Let's go to the log file. The log file is the debug log itself. Let's click add log file. Select the, the debug log of FlexLM and select the path of it. Here we go, debug log. And we select the vendor that we created here under vendors. If we open the advanced tab, we can see that it has sent data size limit, read file every, and watch file by pattern. First of all, watch file by pattern means that if the, your debug logs have uh, pa name patterns, like dates or something, that repeat, then it can recognize that pattern, can watch that pattern. You don't have to, uh, to change it each time you change your debug log. Read file every 10 seconds, so it, it reads it for changes. And send a data size limit. You should pretty much keep it at, at 100 kilobytes unless you have thousands of license managers where you, you should try and change it. So let's click apply. And that's it, we have everything configured. So let's click restart broker to uh, set everything in motion. And, um, and that's it. If we ask you to log the broker, then you go to advanced settings and you have the log levels here. That's it, we have the server. Open on a server that send that gets data from this broker. This broker is connected to this port for now. If I want, I can add a new port, but for now we have this one. So we restarted the broker. Now let's go over to our OpenLM server. Now before I said that there are two ways to configure a server. So Let's first take a look at the easiest way. If we go to the easy admin, now in order to access the easy admin, you can simply uh, write down easy admin, it will find it, or you can go to the OpenLM folder and open, open the easy admin, or you can just go to this uh, this path. Now the local host can be changed and you can access it pretty much from anywhere connected to this uh, to this network. So let's uh, not select the time zone, have it default for now. So we got many different license managers sending data here. A lot of brokers have been um, have been uh, discovering license managers and sending them here. Now I don't want all of them for now. I just want, let's say, uh, this one, what we configured right now. It's uh, this machine with this port, so let's approve it and let's give it a name. Autodesk License Manager. Now I'll save it and we see that it has a, a an alert here. So all we need to do is restart, we go to the configuration tool, to the OpenLM server configuration tool and click apply, restart now. Already we see the license manager here, we see it's configured with everything that it needs. We see that it's enabled, we see that it's type FlexLM, we can change it if we want the description that we can also change, the time zone of the license server. So this license server is set to a certain time zone. The same time zone needs to be in the OpenLM server right here. So it's Pacific US Canada. Sample rate means how often it samples the data. Hostname and port, of course, this is what you need to set to connect. It can be a triad configuration if you have three license managers. 
that are load balancing or backups of each other. So you can set them all, th all three of them and OpenLM will be able to, uh, to use that. So now if we click test, we see that we are getting the data, but we're not getting this from the broker. Even though that we have a broker connected, it's not from the broker. It goes around the broker and goes directly to the license manager. So how does it do that? It uses the LM tools. It has, as we've said before, an ability to connect to an LM util all, of, all on its own. So we have a default LM util here that we connect and do the test from. Now, the OpenLM server remotely queries license manager. That means that you want to directly connect to the license manager from here. You don't have a broker. You can't connect to a broker. So you just want to get the information remotely. Now, if you do that and not use the broker, then you don't get denials data because that we get from the debug log. You saw, we uh, configured it. You, <clears throat> you won't get uh, validation because we use the debug log also for usage validation. You'll, you won't get the effect where the broker buffers files before sending to the OpenLM server. And you won't get all those benefits uh, if you don't use the broker. So it's always better to use the broker. If you connect remotely, there are many things that you don't get. The data itself uh, can be much more validated if you use the broker because it uses the debug log and compares the data that it gets here to the data in the debug log. Now, read license file, that means that we have a license file configured on the vendor on the broker. So if we go to the broker, this is the license server. We'll go to the broker and open it up. By the way, I just op uh, searched for OpenLM broker and we have the OpenLM broker configuration tool. Now here, first we see that we configured the debug log, but we wanted to see the uh, under port, under advanced, we can see the license file itself, this license file. If we show it, it's this. It's what the vendor gave me. It says that I have one permanent license of this, one of this. This is the license server it's allocated to and so on. So going back to the OpenLM server, we see that we have read license file set here because we do have a license file that we are reading on the broker. So there is another checkbox here, which is pretty new. It's denied licenses can be granted by another server, meaning that a license that was uh, a usage that was denied and then the application went out to another server and did give the license. For example, you have two license servers, one local, one global. Let's say that the user goes out to one server, the local server gets denied and then it goes out to the uh, global server and then gets the license. So the first denial uh, will will not be uh, granted. It can be either configured or not configured into the data of OpenLM. So you can choose if you want. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. You can configure the same if you click add and just configure a new license manager. That's it. Now I want to show you um, once we have that configured, let's uh, let's see it on the let's see it here on the interface. So we've opened up the Easy Admin using localhost, but you can use your own server name, and we see the server here. Now we see the start, stop, reread, uh, remove, 
uh, all these three they correspond with the commands that we have here start stop reread now let's try to pull a license and see what it does so we pull an AutoCAD license we check it out and soon we'll see it here now we will see the duration of it we will see when I started who am I what's my machine and we'll see pretty much everything about my usage now let's pretend for a moment that this is a workstation now I am the user the end user I pull the application now how do you know that I'm actually using the application how do you know that I'm actually doing anything you see that the license is, is pulled it will be refreshed in about a minute you see that the license is pulled but you don't really know what I'm doing I can be on Facebook I can be in a meeting meanwhile this license is pulled no one else can pull it so for that we have the active agent now if uh, if we say that this machine is now a workstation an end-user workstation which has AutoCAD on it but we want to track that we want to see what's going on we want to know the actual usage of it so let's install the uh, the active agent let's install the open alarm agent on this workstation now first of all I want to show you if we got the data yeah we got a, we got us right here let's click on us on the used right here by the way we uh, are in licensed servers which can be accessed by start widgets license servers <clears throat> now we see ourselves this is our username our feature this is what we're using uh, the start time when we started the duration about one minute the server but we see that we have idle times right here not lit the remove license will be after about five minutes then the FlexLM license uh, FlexLM allows for it now we see that we have idle times right here but it's not available we want to see it we want to see what's going on we see it's a minute but out of that minute how long was I idle out of the the day how long was I idle so let's close up AutoCAD for now and we installed the active agent so we double clicked on the installation MSI file again it's a next 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 of course agree um, and here you got a selection of uh, the extensions that it finds so it found an extension that OpenLM connect with of AutoCAD we got also ArcGIS MATLAB SOLIDWORKS uh, ArcGIS Pro this is for the uh, save and close functionality so we have AutoCAD here yes click next we do want to install the app manager maybe we will show it later on click next 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 and that's it now it will install now the user doesn't have to install it himself you can roll out the agent you can uh, install it silently on many different machines at once so you don't have to go like a uh, workstation by workstation and install it the next 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 two million times you just one time <clears throat> you uh, push it from a central place preferably from the license manager because everybody's already connected to the license manager so we got this configuration screen <clears throat> it has two tabs general and app manager let's stick with the general for now so of course that we can select the language connect to the OpenLM server so now it's local host but it needs to be the uh, server name of the OpenLM server so let's let's do it now win 10 demo we check connectivity yes it can connect to itself um, this is the log configuration file the logging level but this uh, is pretty much it you don't need really to configure anything else now let's just hit apply and we have 
the agent working here on the on, on the tray. So we, if we right click, we can either see our license usage information. When we see we have li one license manager available right here, I have one license available if I want to use it. So this is the interface that the end user gets. And you can also, of course, open the configuration backup and um, change whatever you want. Now, let's configure the actual usage or idle time um, and, and license harvesting. Let's configure it in the OpenLM interface. So we've opened the Easy Admin interface. Let's click Start, Administration, and first, let's check that we have that in our license. So we click OpenLM license, and we see that we have active agent and actual usage inside. Once we know we have that, we have the extension. If not, you need to call up sales and they will help you. We can get an evaluation of the product for a while. Now, First, let's uh, uh, set the idle time collection. So we go to process features, and we have AutoCAD right here. You can add a new one if you want, but for now, let's stick with this one. Let's double click on it, and we see this loading up. We can enable automatic release functionality, and enable the track process idle time. So we'll say that it's idle, report as idle after three minutes. Idle time release, release threshold, uh, let's say that if the usage percentage is over, for now we'll say 0%, but if it's over like 90%, meaning that the license is about to be stressed, is about to be maxed out, it's stressed, then when that happens, start looking for users that have 15 minutes of idle time and release their license. So let's set it up to three minutes and zero for now. And here we have these three um, indicators which indicate when the application is no longer idle. So if I use AutoCAD, it has a certain process and memory uh, capacity that it needs in order to run idly. So once it goes over a certain threshold, means that the user is using it and it's no longer idle. So let's keep it as, let's even say uh, 5%. Each application is a bit different. And it uh, talks to OpenLM server every 60 seconds. So let's click Save. And we see we have everything here. We have all the features right here. We can add all vendor features if we're not certain if it's there. And it will add that, but we can also add it manually. Just add it and save. And now that we have it, we have our extension functionality, sorry about that, I'm opening the AutoCAD application again in the process features, going back to the edit process here. And there's something I didn't show you, the license release method, there are a few options. So we have the extension, suspension, and procedure. The extension closes the application and saves the work. Suspension freezes the process and releases the license and um, unfreezes the license when the user, uh, unfreezes the application when the user wants to use it and there's a license available. And procedure is pretty much whatever you choose. You can kill the process, you can pop up a notification. It just to run a command script on the license manager, on the, sorry, on the end user workstation. So that's it. Let's uh, save it, go back. And uh, let's pull an AutoCAD application. So we pull the application and let's idle it. Let's let it idle for now. 
Let's go to Start Widget License Servers again. So we'll be able to uh, see the usage and watch it idle. Now, this is pretty much all the time that uh, that we have. We're going to go over, um, while I'm waiting for it, um, we'll, we'll go over the different uh, closing options. We'll see one of them now. Uh, we'll see how to close an application. It cl will close either automatically or we'll just uh, tell it to close. And afterwards, I think that I will run down again the changes of the uh, 4.3 version. Uh, because I said it at the start, maybe you didn't catch me, I'll just go over it again. And beyond that, I will have a Q&A session. Um, you can ask whatever you want. You can. I will open up your microphones. Uh, you can also use the questions box in of the GoToWebinar. Uh, so let's check it out. We see that it's updated every minute or so. So um, it will take about a minute or two when it starts getting the idle time. It can show you the workstation idle time, the application idle time. This way you know if he's on the workstation and not working or if simply not on the workstation. Now, when we click close app, it will, in a minute or two, it will simply close our application. It will save the work and close the application. And uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to give it some time. It will do that on its own. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, let's have a recap of what we saw. So, oh, here you see it closed my application, popped up this message. So we saw installation of the OpenLM server of the OpenLM broker and OpenLM agent. The server we installed on a network server. The broker we installed on a license manager right here. Oh, it's logged off. And the agent on a workstation. Now we've seen how they all connect. We've seen the different configurations of each one. And, uh, and that's about it. This, as you see, is fully working. If I click start, stop, reread, I have all the files here. Oh, none of them for some reason. Um, and, um, and that's it. These are all pretty much all the configurations that we have time for. I do not have time to go over the report scheduler and the app manager, uh, but for that, we have the extensions webinar when where we show that. So just going over uh, the version 4.3 changes, just want to go quickly go over them. So we have, first of all, GDPR compliance, where you can just let us know if you wanted to uh, delete your data. You can also anonymize your database. The OpenLM ID, which will be here, on the left uh, below LM tools, you'll be able to see your OpenLM ID. The agent had a huge reduction in CPU and memory load, both on the database and on the workstation. We now support Altium and NVIDIA license managers. We've had many bug fixes, and in order to upgrade your OpenLM system, uh, you'll need to get a new license file. So you can contact sales so for them to give you a, li a new license file that's a, a version 4.3 compatible. Uh, and know that uh, we cease to provide technical support for core versions older than 3.3.0.38. Uh, we encourage you to upgrade your system as it has many functionalities and uh, bug fixes in its uh, in its workings so thank you thank you very much i hope uh, it was informative i hope you maybe learned a thing or, or two that you didn't know about the configurations of openlm uh, now it, it, i will stay here for a few more minutes you can ask questions i will unmute you but you can also uh, use the questions box of uh, GoToWebinar. So uh, go ahead.
I have a question. Do you have any recommendation to deploy Active Agent to large number of users across multiple locations? Yes, um, there is an option, uh, two options actually. Either uh, using the agent silent installation, silent rollout, or using the uh, using a GPO so a rollout. Now we have a few options. If we go to the OpenLM website. You'll be able to search for it. You can just uh, go to the to the search itself. Just as simple as possible. Just go to the search. Just click uh, silent, and you can find the broker silent installation, the agent silent installation. If you type in GPO, you'll be able to find your see uh, OpenLM agent silent installation. You can find also the broker installation. If you type in GPO, you'll be able to find the GPO option, the GPO rollout. Um, I hope that answers your uh, question. But yeah, you just uh, send it out from a central location, preferably on the licensed server, just send it out to all the connected, connected workstations. Uh, again, instructions on how to push out the agents on client machines. Again, I would just suggest GPO or silent uh, rollout. If you have any issues, you can uh, send an email to openlm, uh, support at openlm.com and we will be happy to help you. Um, no problem. Is version 4.0 broker compatible with 4.3? Uh, no, it's lacking compatibility. Uh, it it might it will work, but it will probably cause issues in the long run. Uh, if you upgrade version uh, OpenLM server to version 4.3, then upgrade the OpenLM brokers and OpenLM agents also to version 4.3. It's important to uh, to remain within the same version to prevent any issues. Is this recorded uh, uh, webinar recorded? Yes, uh, it is recorded. You will be sent this uh, webinar, this recording, so you can go over it yourself and see all the different configurations that you might have missed. What is the decent size to be set for a broker cache? Oh, that's uh, that's getting uh, technical. Um, it needs to survive around two days. Now it really depends. It really depends on your current uh, uh, installation. Like if you have a broker with 20 different vendors on it, well, it's gonna it's gonna be a bigger number than if you have one. Uh, if you if you want, you can send us an email to support at openlm.com we can try and figure it out together uh, on a live session and see exactly uh, what should be what should be preferably the amount that you need We tested this many years ago and still have OpenLM server version 1.6. Now, uh, in order to upgrade from 1.6 to 4.3, it's not going to really be a, a click next installation. I'm not sure that everything will go smoothly uh, as it's a very old version. I suggest to contact support and we'll be happy to, to help you either we'll be able to upgrade the database or we'll just migrate all your data to an already upgraded database. Uh, either one, uh, just let us know. We have a few tricks up our sleeves. If 
you have any more questions, uh, please feel free. <laughs> showing why the files weren't showing up. I'm not sure about that. I need to check. Uh, usually during presentations, something always goes wrong. <laughs> We have a question about using SSL. <clears throat> well, you when you enable it on the server, will it be automatically detected on the brokers and agents? No. Um, let's open up the agent configuration uh, just to give you an example. So you have a way to use SSL right here. Just click this checkbox. Also on the OpenLM server configuration tool, if you go uh, to the port settings. So the agent reporting port is usually 7012, so it can use SSL. Uh, if you're using the router, the license manager port is the broker port. So you can set it here in the OpenLM server, here in the OpenLM agent, right here, and in the OpenLM broker, if we go to our license manager and wake him up, and we go here, we see that we have an option to connect through SSL. So if you have SSL configured, then you can just um, click the checkboxes on all the different devices. If you need to update your brokers and update your uh, agents remotely, meaning that you already have an agent, but you want to set the SSL option now, so you can use the GPO or silent rollout to not upgrade their OpenLM agent, but just upgrade that specific configuration, just change the SSL configuration. So we have that also in our, in, in our documentation. And I see that I answered your next, next question. Yeah, you won't have to do it manually. You can do it uh, using the uh, silent rollout or the GPU. Uh, GPO, sorry. I will, you will have to send us an email regarding uh, the fact that you didn't see an SSL option. We can help you set up the correct script that you want in order to uh, roll it out to all the agents. So send us an email to support at openlm.com because it gets very, uh, very technical into your system. I, I'm not sure why you didn't see it. It needs further investigation. Uh, please send us an email. You're most welcome.
can the OpenLM server run on the same server as the license manager? Yes, indeed, it can run on the license manager as well. It's not recommended, but if you have one license manager, yeah, you can put it there, no problem. If you have 200 license managers and you want to put it on a license manager, then it's not recommended because uh, if you have 200 more, a thousand license managers, then there's a lot of data coming into the OpenLM server. The OpenLM server calculates it and deposits it in, into the database. Now this can take some, uh, can take resources once you go up to hundreds of license managers. But if you have a handful and you want to put it on the license manager, no problem. Okay, <clears throat> okay, thank you guys. Um, thank you guys for joining. I, w I hope you'll have a great day. Bye.